So what sparked video 1080 was finding two vacuum cleaners by the side of the road. We pulled them apart and we got a couple of these out. Well, these are universal motors with an impeller because, of course, it's a vacuum cleaner. Now, you find vacuum cleaners, or as I do, thrown away all the time. Once you take the impeller off and you get the case off, what you get is actually something like this. This is a really rather beautiful universal motor. Now, a universal motor can work on AC or DC, and it is a straightforward DC generator. Now, there are issues with universal motors. I mean, their speed control is rubbish, which is why you find them in vacuum cleaners, because you've only got one speed on fast. However, when you want to make a generator out of them, you've got to remember that the electromotive force, E, is equal to BLV sine theta. At least that's the way I remember it. B is the strength of the field, L is the length of the wire, um, V is the velocity at which it turns, and sine theta is the angle of the wire to the field. Velocity clearly has a huge impact on what these can do. If you can spin these slowly, they won't generate very much. If you can spin these quickly, actually, they generate an awful lot. Because the series wound, the field uh, current and the armature current are dependent on each other. If you're running this with a, a very high resistance, you get a low current flow. You have a very weak field, so it won't generate much. Low resistance, high current flow, strong field generates a lot. So the velocity at which you can turn these is really key to how much these things can generate. I mean, if I spin this by hand, I'll get a few volts out of it. Let's have a look at that. So I've hooked it up to my voltmeter. It's on open circuit, and I give that a twiddle. 21 millivolts, which is pathetic. I won't even bother doing the open circuit voltage because I can tell you it's a milliamp or less. Now, that's a real issue, obviously, if you want to run your house on there because that's less than you're going to find in a lemon battery. So we really need to do something with that to get that gearing up there so that when we give it a spin, we can get that to spin quickly. One thing about these, incidentally, is they are self-exciting. If they're not, you stick a magnet on there or you put a separate current down the... Um, Field windings, you'll get them going, but they're self-exciting with the residual magnetism that's already in there. But even so, we're left with that problem that if you can't spin that, you're not going to get anything out. So, need some gearing. Easiest way to get gearing is the other thing I seem to find at least a million of a week. These things, exercise bikes. This particular exercise bike came from the same place as our rowing machine. That's our friends who run the boxing club. They donated this to us. The exercise bike itself, I'm not going to use that much of it actually. What I'm interested in is this section here, which is the gearing resistance section. So let's get that apart and have a look at that. Here it is with its support bar plastic cover removed, and that's the heart of the beast. Let's have a look at that. So here's my driving paddle, uh, pedal attached to this big pulley. That works the little pulley there, working that big pulley, working the little pulley, working the flywheel. The flywheel can go against this magnet shoe here that I'm holding back with my thumb to increase the resistance. So we've got this nice gear train here, and if I give that a little turn, and I'm turning that quite slowly, but the flywheel turns really quite quickly. So obviously we've got the mechanism we need. If we can attach our motor somehow to this point, then when we turn this slowly, the motor will turn quickly. Okay, I've got the whole thing to bits, and this is the main bit, and there's the flywheel, free spinning, but it's driven by that belt. Now, we've got to connect that somehow, because there's no other way. We've got to connect that somehow to the motor in a robust manner, because we're going to be turning this. And now then, I've done this before, but I did this before with these tiny two belts, and I went to see our mates down at Canterbury Auto, and they gave me this. It is a really sturdy toothed belt. Just so happens, it fits nicely round there and matches up, so I'm gonna slice this off, glue it around there, and that will make my flywheel one massive cog. Then I can bolt the whole thing together. Okay, I tell you what, this is gonna annoy some folks, but what the, hey, I was looking for something to make the smaller cog to go with this big cog that we made, when I realized I actually have a few of these. This is a printer motor. And you'll notice it's just a great big drum. So that's going to be really easy for me to put that around and make that the smaller cog and everything's mounted rather than having to make a cog for that and then mount it. So that will work and you're just going to have to make one yourself or take my word for it, whichever way around you want to do it, because I'm going to use a printer motor instead of the Hoover motor just because I like it. 
Now, I do think that these are as, a, as readily available, if not more available, than Hoovers. I mean, printers, you just come across them all the time. So, it's easier for me. I'm going to make that into the cog and then mount that on there, and that will be the generator. I actually love the idea. So, sorry about the change, but hey-ho, that's the way life is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I am super pleased with this, really super pleased. There's our little gearing system handle to turn it here and I can tell you this stupid little thing it turns out about 12 volts and two or three amps it's amazing now what I've got to demonstrate the 12 volts is this little 12 volt lighting strip and I can tell you when I turn this it gets bright so let me give it a turnover because we don't need to turn it quickly and we'll get some real bright light out of that I'm not looking at it <laughs> Isn't that awesome? I mean, that's really awesome. Uh, and I measured that on the meter, obviously, and, and those are the results I got. Now, clearly, if you bother to put a cover on this, and here where we've attached the handle, there we go, there, then you could attach some blades. Now, it's made from a bicycle. So a bicycle chain sprocket with some blades screwed to that is gonna make you a wind turbine. This entire thing was made for nothing. Isn't that brilliant? It's, a, it's zero cost for, to me. Um, new cogging system, 12 volts, 3 or 4 amps at that rate of turn. Absolutely fantastic. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.